Yes, yeah, so we're gonna change this real quick. Also just saw a coyote cross the exit of the highway, so now I'm like freaked out looking into the brush here, waiting for a coyote to pounce. As you saw, the air pressure in our spare tire is too low. It's only like 59 PSI when it should be about 72. So we're gonna fill up the spare tire. I didn't know what to do, but I know the first two steps. I know where the air compressor is, and I know how to open the hood. Do what you can to be helpful. Can you hold that? So, the issue, if you didn't, if I didn't explain it well, the valve stem I think had a, it was like torn or something because I've got those TPMS screw on things. And I think what happened is when I got my tires replaced over the summer, I forgot to tell them about those and there's a special little nut in the back you have to unscrew first. If you don't do it, you just try to like take it off and you twist that, you twist that stem. I think that's what happened because the stem was kind of right. torn. So hopefully there's an easy way to replace that stem. In a week. Because the tire's fine, it's that stem. I mean, this is fine, this is a good tire. We got this one in Michigan. It's not good, but it's, it'll be fine. I know, but fine. we need a spare. We need a new spare. Yeah, you're right, we do need a new spare. So that'll be Ashley's job on the drive, is look up tire stuff. Is that the spare already? Yeah. That was fast. You were, in your second life, you were a pit master. Not my first rodeo. Wait, what are As they called? Not a pit master. Uh, pit crew. Pit crew. Pit, pit master's like barbecue. <laughs> I think I'm hungry. Coming down. Bad tire and a whole lot of crap we got to reorganize now. You know, to constantly do these races. We finally made it to Ajo, Arizona. This was a drive day for the record books. Not one of our uh, most favorite, I would say. Well, here's the deal. Today was great. It was successful, mostly. Um, actually, I'm, I'm backpedaling a little bit. It wasn't that good. I'm trying to be positive. We didn't have any other RV related issues. It was just the roads got super crappy. Yeah, we took, I think it's called Awe, Ajo Road. Ajo Highway. Or Ajo Way. Yeah. Whatever it was, it was basically from Tucson to here, and it was like 120 miles. It was just a one-lane road, two-lane road. Two-lane road. road. There, there was one lane going each way. Right. And it was bumpy as all get out. It went through. The dips were crazy. Ugh. It was like you'd just be going straight, and then you would see a drop off, and it was like. Boom. We're done with the weekend drive. It was like 700, over 750 miles total. Today's drive was eight and a half hours. We had to change a tire. Yeah. Um, the bike rack broke. Oh gosh. So the bikes, we may be able to get them to Mexico, but they're not coming back with us. Taco We're, night makes everything better. It does. Then we work a week here and then we go to Mexico. Oh my gosh. So fun times. <laughs> the man is back. How did the tire repair shop go? Success. They, uh, Where'd you go? So I went to Napa, like literally, I could have walked there. So I went to Napa and uh, the guy replaced the valve stem. Good to go, it was 20 bucks. Um, he told me that actually when you get your tires replaced, they're supposed to replace the valve stem. Really? Yeah, because I think the issue was like the TPMS, that nut that's backed on to kind of tighten it. I forgot to tell him. They tried to like 
yep. to spin it off. They couldn't, so they're turning the valve stem, which eventually tore it. But this guy's like, yeah, they're supposed to replace that anyways, which they definitely didn't. So, do you think they replaced the valve stems on the other tires? No. Oh crap. So that might happen to the other ones. So I'll have to keep a lookout, but at least we know the issue. So I'll check those before we go to Mexico and I'll just see if there's any obvious signs. Is there any way to like seal it if it does happen again? I mean, you could probably temporarily seal it with like some glue or something, but yeah. I, I would not feel comfortable. No. I would just get it replaced. It's not that I know, but I'm saying if it happens in Mexico. I, I'm sure we can get it replaced in Mexico. Yeah, that's true. That wouldn't be a big deal. So yeah, that's good to go. I'll put the tire back on and that's one project done. Yay! We have a lithium compatible converter. However, it's not turned on. So to turn it on, I have to take it out and put a, a wire back there to turn it on. So this is going to be a bit of a uh, experiment. So let's see how this goes. But if I'm successful, then that'll allow the converter to charge the lithium batteries at a higher voltage to allow them to get to 100%. So right now they get to like 97, 98, but we want them to be topped off. So let's see how this goes. Okay, I've got this thing unscrewed. I think I'm just gonna pull it out now. And then behind there's the converter and there's two spots where the wire goes. Um, I do have all the power off, both the AC side and the DC side. I turned that power off just to make sure that nothing's gonna zap me. Um, I had to take the cabinet door off to get this panel off. Whatever, there's always just something with RV life. It's never just easy. All right. So that project was kind of difficult. I ended up having to unscrew the converter, try to wedge it out from those wires, and I barely had enough room to feed those wires into the Wago connector. <sighs> but it's done. So I'm gonna run some loads to get the battery drained, and then I'm gonna plug in electric, the AC side, and see what we start charging at. Turn the inverter on. Okay, there goes the inverter. Just gonna run our space heater a little bit. Uh, but in the meantime, when we were driving yesterday, assumably when we were going over the rocky roads and the BLM spot, we have a speaker that sits over here and the speaker fell behind the couch and I cannot get it. It's too tight, so I need to take the couch out to try to get it. Nothing's easy. All that just to get this guy. Just a Google speaker. Well, now it's back. Project done. Pretty good view up here on top of the RV in Ajo, Arizona. So I'm up here because I need to do a little bit of a turn of bonding. Um, I rewired the solar panels. And uh, I don't know if I showed you, but I added a, another panel. So I'm now at 1200 watts. And uh, what happened is that overloaded the MPPT. It was only rated for 150 volts and that was more. So what I had to do is rewire the panels. And now I've got two series wired in parallel, if that makes sense. So three panels wired in series, another set of three panels wired in series, both of those in parallel going to the MPPT. So now I just need to turn up on the cords so they're not flapping all over the place. And then there's a few other spots, like on this slide, I'm going to turn up on the top of it. You can see I got halfway done, but then I ran out of a turn up on, so I got to do the rest. So this panel, this panel, and this panel are in one series, and then this panel, that panel, and the third panel are in another series. So all together, 1200 watts, wired in parallel, so that'll reduce the volts by 50%, and it'll triple the amps. It works now, it didn't overload the charger. Great, great for Mexico, because we need it. 30 days of boondocking, no hookups. RIP bike rack. So we partnered with SnapPad and they sent us this goodie box. So we're gonna open up and see what's inside. 
and they sent it just in time because we're headed to Mexico. And I don't know how we'd get packages down there. It's pretty heavy. Sweet. So we have four snap pads. And these are going to help us replace these lovely yellow leveling blocks which take up so much room and as you've seen in all of our videos they're always dirty messy and just kind of a pain in the butt so these are permanent they mount on the bottom of our feet here and uh, you really never have to mess with them at all so we'll get these installed probably once we get to our our spot on friday which is the night before we go to mexico so we'll show you that coming up oh my gosh in t minus 24 hours we're going to be in mexico here are the major things that we've accomplished already and still need to accomplish in the next 24 hours. <laughs> Welcome to my pantry and my checklist. Look at this great little chalkboard that we have. I like to use the inside because I want the outside to stay really pretty and clean. I got OCD, it's fine. Okay, so here's the checklist that is for our border crossing from, what's the city we're crossing in from? Lukeville. Lukeville. So currently we're in Ajo, Arizona. Tonight we're going to Oregon Pipe National Monument, National Park, um, because then we're only 30 minutes from the border. So we want to be as close as possible because less our, than less than that. So our goal is to, um, the border opens at 8.30 a.m. and closes at 5. Those are the hours right now in January 2023. From what I've heard, that can change. So be sure to look that up before you cross. Um, so this is our checklist of things that we've been working on for the last couple weeks and things that we're going to be taking care of today in our last 24 hours before we head to Mexico. So the first thing that we did a few weeks ago was get truck and RV insurance. So we're a part of the escapers group, escapers group, and um, there's some folks in there who are experts at um, going into Mexico. They've done it before. So there was an online insurance agency that they recommended that's who we went through everything that we did was all online you need to have liability at a minimum and um depending on where you're going in mexico it's different costs so we're st staying in like the northwest area puerto Pinesco, i don't know sonora area. yeah but anyways if you were going to like baja or puerto vallarta you'd have to pay different rates because it's different locations um so we got six months of coverage because it was cheaper than getting it for 30 days and yeah, we kind of got everything because I'd rather have more insurance than less when it comes to driving through Mexico with literally everything we own. And then when we were in South Padre, there was a nice little copy shop. So I just got, I printed out our insurance documents for the truck and the RV. I made copies of our health insurance cards. I made copies of our passports, copies of our driver's license as our second form of ID. So this way, for two reasons. Uh, if anything were to happen to these documents, well, we have copies to hopefully help us out in a pinch. And I've heard of some sketchy instances very, very, very rarely to where if you're in kind of a sketchy situation and somebody asks you for your passport or your driver's license, you don't want to give them the document itself. You can just give them a copy. So just rather be on the safe side. Um, so once we had copies, we have them all in a nice little envelope, ready to go. Truck and RV maintenance. There are maintenance shops in Mexico, but it's just easier for us to get that out of the way while we're in the United States where it's easily accessible for us. Everybody speaks English. The currency is dollars. It's just easier to do it here. It's not impossible to do it in Mexico, but we just took care of it while it's easier for us here. So oil change, tire pressure, roof check. So just making sure that everything is on the up and up, tightened, ready to roll. Um, today, we're gonna dump our gray and black tanks. It is instructed that when you cross the border, your tanks need to be empty. So we're gonna do that. And then um, in the same process, we're going to fill our fresh water tank because there will be trucks that come around at our campground in um in rocky point but we don't know when we don't know if it'll be tomorrow saturday or if it will be wednesday so we need some fresh water to to get by for a few days just to be prepared the next thing on the list is storing your gun weapon ammunition you're not allowed to take that into mexico so you need to find a legitimate way to store your gun 
don't bring your gun or ammo into Mexico, all right? Yeah. You'll go to jail. Simple as that. Um, we will be going to an ATM to get some cash. There are ATMs in Mexico. However, um, some of them have high fees. I don't know where they are. In this case, there's one across the street from us at this RV park that we're staying at. So we need to have cash to pay for our campground. There are places that take credit cards in Rocky Point, but a lot of places also accept American dollars. So we just want to have some cash on us. Um, and I'm pretty sure the people who come around with the honey wagon for the black tank dubs and they also take cash and water, they only take cash probably. And yeah. like filling propane at the campground, probably only cash. Just to be prepared. We can always get more when we're down there, but let's just have some right now. Uh, the FMM, that is something that we'll get once we get to the border tomorrow. That is basically like your your paperwork to be in Mexico, to be staying in Mexico. So um, as far as I understand, they'll provide us the paperwork at the border. They'll take our photos, log whatever other information they need to. And then we need to drive just a little bit like to a building next door. You get the FMM stamped and then you're on your merry way to your destination. So we'll do that tomorrow and then tequila. <laughs> That's gotta be on the list, right? That's, oh yeah. This is celebratory tequila that we've made it and we're living in Mexico for a month. Woo! confiscated on our way from Mexico back into the United States so my new friends at Ajo Heights RV Park have graciously agreed to take care of them for me hello feels so good outside it's probably like mid 60s and it's been like 50s in Ajo um, but our, our site didn't get any sun and we realized how much that makes a difference obviously inside for us um, so this is gonna be great just full Sun all afternoon Oh, we can open the door. All right, we took an extra long lunch break. We gotta get back to work. We really have to get back to work, yikes. And because we didn't disconnect the truck, because we just want to be able to roll out quickly in the morning, five seconds later, we're set up and working. In Starlink, you just roll it out, plug it in. Oh, look at these speeds. We've got 150 down, 20 up. Dang. And we're, we're less than probably 10 minutes from the border in the ah. middle of this like cactus desert place. So Oregon I'm, like pipe. Oregon pipe, yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not just any cactus place. It's Oregon pipe. I just heard of this place for the first time in like like a day ago. Yeah. But it but seriously like look at this view for work. I wish we were staying here a week now. Yeah, me too. Gotta leave something to come back to. Maybe next year we'll stay here for a week. Yeah, I really gotta get back to okay, work. Okay, let's do yeah, work time. <laughs> As an RVer, if there's any way to make setup and tear down easier, we're all in. Snap pads make that process a whole heck of a lot easier. Besides the efficiency of tear down and setup, we love that these are 100% recycled. They can hold up to 10,000 pounds. They're available for all different types of RVs. They come in different packs, depending on how many stabilizers you have. In this case, we have four. So we have four of these babies. They also provide um, a wider surface area. So that just helps with stabilization. So we're gonna set these up and show you how easy it is. All right, so I'm gonna put some dish soap around the rim, which helps 
the jack go in a little bit easier. That's what we've heard. And then if it's successful, you should hear a snap because they're snap pads. Okay. You can start to lower. I'll tell you to stop if I need you to stop. Done. Okay. Nice. Good. <laughs> so you don't need to really move it, it'll... It looks fine, yeah. Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll It's time for Mexico, baby.